Okay, so now I got the guard fitted on there. I got a two part guard. It's uh, stainless steel and nickel silver. I got a nickel silver pin to help position my other piece. This was a, actually a piece that I cut wrong and drilled off to the side wrong, so recycling it where you can't see it. So when they fit together, they, they make a nice, good fit on there. This next step, I'm gonna be soldering all these pieces onto the tang of the knife and that seals any water from getting in between and causing corrosion and eventually seeping into the handle and causing corrosion down here and then basically your handle falls apart after a few years so it's real critical to seal this area real well. I use a silver solder when I do that. Okay so I applied uh, it's just a regular flux for soldering. It's a paste flux. I applied it to the tang of the knife. I'm going to take a little bit on my finger. And get it inside the guard here. So when I slide it down, there's going to be a good amount of flux. To clean the metal as it gets hot. So the, the solder will flow down through in, into it. Now this process is real critical not to overheat the knife. So I'm going to be putting most of the heat into the guard. Because it doesn't matter if the guard overheats because that's not, you have, it doesn't have to hold an edge. Okay, so the guards are cooled off. I'm going to use uh, this file I modified. It's got a nice crisp square edge here on all four corners. I'm going to use one edge to scrape the softer silver solder off. It's softer compared to the nickel silver on the guard, this side of the guard. And that way uh, my handle will fit nice and flat and flush against here. And there won't be any problems when I come to fit and finish. The reason why I use the file like this, because if I were to use the teeth on the file, the silver solder would gall them up and just load it up and then it wouldn't cut. Real pain in the butt. Okay, now I'm going to take my uh, 3M scotch Bright wheel on my angle gr die grinder here. I'm just going to clean this up, that way it has a nice clean surface for the glue to adhere on. I'm just going to hit the, the tang up while I'm at it.
I cut my block and uh, cleaned up the face so I could see. And I got my template I usually use for my handles. Trace that on there, and I set my uh, my knife so I could figure out where the tang exactly was going to be. So I had to trim this part because it was going to be too close to the back of a handle. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the blank, my uh, bandsaw and cut the block up to shape. And then uh, I'll lay out for drilling my the hole for my tang. And I'll show you how I hot set my tang and my, my handle. Okay, so I uh, rough cut it out of the bandsaw. And I made, probably hard to see, but I made a line down the center of my tang. And I made a line where the center of the tang comes through and just a rough eyeball where the, the center of my block is. I'm going to use, it's a 3 8 long shaft drill bit. And this is a 90 degree point on it for the softer materials. It doesn't uh, tend to break up the wood. And it, the cutting edge produces less heat, especially uh, important when you're cutting in bone and things like that. I prefer an air drill. It's lighter, it gives me more control. So I got it in a vise, so the vise jaws are going to be right down where I want to be. It gives me the opportunity to sight down the drill just like a gun. So I got my drill started, and now I can sight it straight down the, the block of wood. important to do a peck drill when you're drilling beyond the diameter of the drill that you're using. This is well beyond it. Keeps your flutes from loading up and produces a cleaner cut, especially on the inside. So you can see, my hole was just a hair off, which isn't too big of a deal. We can uh, adjust that when we heat it up and hot side it on. We're back at the uh, acetylene torch. I'm going to heat this much of the tang up to red hot and burn my handle on. I got it at this angle, so one, when the flames come out, they're not going to burn me and I can keep it sighted as I'm burning it in, in and make sure I'm where I need to be. As I drill my hole just slightly off, I'm, spending, I'm putting just a little bit more pressure on the top edge to burn that top edge on a little bit more. It's real critical you don't put too much pressure on it, especially with the softer wood because it'll crack it.
can see all the resin from the coca bola being naturally so oily just dripping off the guard. What I'm doing is this last little bit I didn't drill and it's straight burning this last part of the tang on. There we go. Looks perfect. I like to put a small thin piece of leather in between my guard and my handle. It, uh, I think it looks, looks nice. And it, uh, any real minor variation in between this and this surface, that leather just soaks up and you can't tell visually. I get it really close. And then that leather just, it's a little bit of a fudge factor, a little cheap.